What's up YouTube? This is Chris and this is my channel Barn on 11970. I'm going to try and make this video again in the middle of making the video. At the end I hit the wrong button and it didn't record. Smart me. All right. Um I want to talk a little bit more about educating people about diseases and viruses because unfortunately most people spend their lives listening to people at water coolers, listening to the media that is there to scare you and create their agendas and propaganda. And you see it on YouTube, people, for whatever reasons, because they want to get lots of views and, you know, they want the attention. They would rather give misinformation or inaccurate information than tell the truth, which is not very passionate. It's not very sexy. So I'm here to try and set things straight because, first of all, I just want to say I am not a doctor. OK, don't let the scrub fool you. I am a massage therapist. And people will say, well, how can you even talk about it? Well, one of the things that we had to do when we went to school to become massage therapists is we had to take an entire semester on communicable diseases. We had to talk about viruses, how they transfer, because in this business, we are dealing with actually physically touching clients. And the last thing you want is somebody to have some kind of communicable disease that you can spread to someone else. So we had to learn anatomy, pathology. We had to learn all about this stuff. And people have to understand how diseases can be transferred. Now, the most dangerous type of disease is an airborne disease. So if, for example, if you just think of something like the common cold, common cold, you can sneeze, you take the virus, put it into the air where it can survive. And if another person breathes it, breathes it in, they can be affected by that particular type of virus. Now, People have to understand how difficult it is to get some viruses because they are not as easily transferable as they lead you to believe. So let's talk about something as simple as AIDS, because there were people back in the days when AIDS first came out talking about how, oh, if you spit on somebody, you can actually now catch AIDS because they did that to you. Well, the way AIDS works to be able to transfer it, it cannot survive in the air. So even if you had AIDS virus in your saliva and you spit it at somebody, the fact that it hit the air kills the virus. So by the time it hits the person, it wouldn't matter anyway. But what would also have to happen is the person would either have to swallow it, which your stomach acids would kill most of the virus anyway, or it would have to get into an open wound. So people have to understand how difficult it is actually to get a disease. So, for example, with AIDS, unless you're sharing a needle, unless you have an open wound where there is blood being exchanged or during sex, a sexual situation where there is a transfer of fluids, viruses are not as easily obtained as you might think. Now, first of all, when you talk about something like Ebola, I know that sounds so amazingly sexy and everybody's talking about it. it's the word of the day and everybody wants to think they're into the every the newest topics and they're up with the current events and trends because people have to feel important that way. And instead of learning the truth about what's going on, they help spread an agenda with misinformation or inaccurate information. Now, is the Ebola virus transferable? It absolutely is. Now, what does that mean? Well, because of the fact that Ebola is not a, a virus that can live and become airborne, it has to be transferred through either a, a dirty needle, a bodily transformation of fluids, or through blood. So, for example, if you go and get a blood transfusion and the blood was dirty and it had, they took that blood from somebody who had Ebola, and you inserted that into your body, well, guess what? You now have spread the disease. If you, for some reason, have sex with someone that has Ebola and has an open wound, and it gets into an open wound that you have, well, guess what? You're probably going to have Ebola. So you could sit next to a person on a plane, and they have the Ebola virus, and everybody else can be all scared, and they can put their big ass masks on, and they can sit there and say, oh, get away from me. It's because they, they're living with their ignorance. You cannot catch it. So here's some advice. If you're sitting next to a person on a plane and they start getting a really nasty fever and it looks like they have blisters and they might start passing out, you might want to stop and say, you know what? I don't think I should be making out with this person. I don't think I should be putting an open wound next to this person and cutting them open. And I don't think I should really be having sex with that person.
common sense if you think about it. So unless you're planning on doing that, if you're on a plane or you're next to somebody and they're breaking into a sweat and they're passing out and they're feeling really sick, getting really bad fevers, and you decide that's the time you have, we want to have sex with them, well, then you deserve to have whatever virus they're going to plan on giving you. So let's also talk about Ebola. Now, Ebola, everybody seems to think is just some current new trend, some new disease. Well, it's been around since the 1970s, and it primarily affected people in certain parts of Africa because it had to do with the fact of bad, poor conditions in that area, diseased animals that transferred it to humans. So let me put it to you this way. They're trying to make it out to be a disease that if you even say the word, you're going to automatically attract it and drop dead. Well, wouldn't you think that if a disease that's been around since the 1970s in an, a poor area where they couldn't get access to a lot of medicines, a lot of vaccines, or even clean water, you think the, the uh, fatality rate would have wiped out all of Africa at this point? If you're talking decades of this supposed deadly virus being out into the open. So it's not something brand new. So it's all about education. It's all about knowing how diseases and viruses can be transferred. So I wouldn't recommend getting a blood transfusion from somebody without verifying where that blood came from. I wouldn't su suggest if somebody is very sick to want to risk having an open wound and having sex with them or saying, well, you know what, I think I'm going to cut them open and I think I'm going to cut myself open and we're going to transfer our blood. So if there's any people that uh, practice vampirism, you may not want to transfer or suck the blood of somebody that might be sick. So as comical as that sounds, that's pretty much what it takes to get this stuff. But you'll have the media tell you that, you know, it can be transferred from person to person. That is 100 percent accurate but not 100% truthful because yes, it's transferable, but like the way I said it can be, it has to be to be transferable. They don't talk about that. Omitting the truth is the same as lying. So if you're sitting there watching the news and you're saying, oh, this Ebola, vir Ebola virus, it's transferable from person to person, you're gonna think, wow, now I'm afraid to go near somebody because what if I catch that deadly disease that has such a high fatality rate, even though the high fatality rate was from the 1970s till recently in poorer nations of Africa, and it hasn't wiped out people. And, you know, throughout our history, you know, people do have a thing called an immunity system where we've survived things like the Black Plague, and we've survived cancer and all these different diseases and all these different illnesses that have been around for thousands of years. People will always survive. So if you think this is going to be some cataclysmic event, then you're just feeding into the fear porn and you're helping them by giving them free advertisement of spreading misinformation. So I highly suggest you read about viruses and how they can be transferred and notice how the media and other people, because for whatever reasons, whatever agendas they have, they want to give parts of information instead of all parts of information. So when they say to you that Ebola can be transferred from one human to another, that is absolutely right. But it is not the complete truth because they are not telling you what steps have to be taken for that virus to go from one person to another. So if you don't want to get Ebola from a person sitting next to you on a plane or sitting next to you in a restaurant, just don't have sex with them while they're passing out and they're sweating to death. Don't transfer blood from one another. Don't go swallowing spit and hoping it doesn't get into an open gash that you have in your sore throat. And just be a little bit smarter. It's not an airborne virus, which means a person with Ebola can sneeze all over you all they want, and you're not going to catch anything. So if people want to be ignorant, that is perfectly fine. But my channel is, is based on trying to educate people to stop with the fear porn, stop promoting the fear, getting to the point where you understand that, that there are agendas. It's all about making people spread information without knowing what they're speaking about. And if you want to listen to the people that are sitting around at the water cooler talking about the latest gossip or the news media that we know time and time again is giving mostly in either inaccurate information or flat out lies. Well, don't be surprised at how many people are going to be scared about these epidemics that are made up. Yes, people can die from lots of diseases. It's just how do you catch them? How do you get them? Where are they? 
So if you want to go by the fear porn, you could pretty much die from anything. You might as well just stay in your house, stay in your bed, because you never know, meteorite could come out of the sky and crash in the head. But then again, if you stay in bed all the time, you can end up having your muscles atrophy to the point where you get bed sores and you die in your bed. So if you want to spend your whole life paranoid about the next big event that's out to get you, you're never going to live life. You're never going to enjoy life. You're just going to spend your whole life surviving. And that's why listening to people like Alex Jones and all these fear porn places, they're there to scare the living daylights out of you so you can keep yourself in a lower vibration so you can buy all of their savior of the world items, buy their DVDs, and continually wonder what thing next is out to kill you. And you wonder why people are depressed, angry, scared, and easily controlled. Ignorance is no excuse. If you want to be ignorant, that's, that's your choice. But don't spread it to other people. Because you have a better chance of spreading ignorance than you do spreading the Ebola virus. Thanks for watching. Peace.